look everywhere you can to cut a little bit from your expenses. It will all add up to a meaningful sum. Suze Orman As you know, reaching your financial goals can be difficult, and you may become discouraged if your efforts do not yield the results you expect. It is also true that saving money can be a tedious and arduous process if not executed properly, but the results are worth the effort. Number 10. Establish a budget One of the best ways to start saving your money and living within your means is by establishing a budget. A budget is a plan that lays out exactly how much you're going to spend on what during a given period of time, usually monthly. By doing this, you can ensure that your money is being used efficiently and effectively according to your priorities. To start creating a budget, the first thing you'll need to do is figure out how much money you will have each month after taxes and other deductions. This amount will be called your net pay, which you can find on your pay stub. If you're not sure where to find it or what it's called, ask your HR department for assistance. Next, add up all of your regular monthly expenses, bills like rent, mortgage payments, utilities, car payments, and so on, and subtract this number from your net pay. The amount left over is called discretionary income, money that can be spent however you choose. It may seem counterintuitive at first to only spend what's left over in order to save money later down the line. But this habit helps put into focus how little of that discretionary income actually goes towards things we want rather than things we need right now. Number 9. Automate your savings account deposits It's not just about knowing how to make the most of your money. It's about cultivating good habits that keep you mindful of your finances. That's why automating your savings is such a powerful habit to have. It quite literally forces you to live below your means. Here's how it works. If you set up a recurring deposit from your checking account into a savings account, it automatically takes any extra money in your checking account and transfers it over to savings. If you don't have any extra money in your checking account, it won't transfer anything over at all. You can set up a weekly or monthly recurring deposit that works on whatever schedule you want. So say, for example, you earn $2,000 in one week and spend $1,800 on essentials like rent and groceries. A recurring deposit will only pull the $200 that's left into a savings account for you to use when you need it. This way, if there ever is a time when you really need to save money but don't have any available because of some emergency expense, having this habit will help ensure that you always have some money left over to deal with those unplanned expenses and stay out of debt. Number 8. Don't use credit cards unless absolutely necessary. Many people in the United States spend tens of thousands of dollars more than they earn each year, relying on credit cards to fill the gap. But this is only a short-term solution. Sooner or later, these people will have to pay their bills. If they don't save enough money to pay their bills, they'll be forced into bankruptcy. Saving is all about living below your means. By not spending more than you make, you set yourself up for financial security and flexibility in an emergency. For instance, if you lose a job, or if you're forced to take leave from work. Start by ensuring your income exceeds your monthly expenses. If it isn't, figure out how much extra money you need each month just to stay afloat, and then start figuring out how much less you can spend. Additionally, if you pay cash only for what you now have, you won't incur debt. In the US, an average household that has debt owes over $15,000 in credit card debt alone, and almost half of those households can't pay the bills on time. Using cash instead of a credit card can prevent adding to your debt and make it more manageable. Number 7. Spend less than you earn We all want to live financially stable, comfortable lives. We also all have our own definitions of what that looks like, whatever yours is. You can get there by developing some smart savings habits, like spending less than you earn and living below your means. Spending less than you earn means knowing exactly how much money is coming in each month and exactly how much is going out. When you know how much money is left over, after subtracting your expenses from your income, figure out what you need to spend on necessities like rent or mortgage, groceries, electricity bill, and so on, and then choose the rest of your expenses based on what's left over. If you can't prioritize some things right now, try to cut them out entirely until you have enough slack in your budget to bring them back in again. This can help ensure that you don't end up spending more than you make and putting yourself in debt unnecessarily. Number 6. Have a plan for unexpected expenses Saving money is a habit that needs to be learned and practiced. 
You have to stay positive and learn from your mistakes along the way. The hardest part is starting, but once you get going, it becomes second nature. In your 20s or 30s, you may not have given much thought to saving money. Most people are just trying to make ends meet and set aside money for things they want rather than need. Once you get older, though, you'll start thinking more seriously about putting away some cash for retirement or other future expenses like college tuition or medical bills. The first step in creating this new habit is setting up an emergency fund. It's important to have money set aside for unexpected events like losing your job or getting sick without insurance coverage. The next step after that would be building up savings over a longer period of time. So when those big life events happen, like buying a house, you'll have enough money saved up already. Number five, reduce or ditch your cable or Netflix subscriptions. We live in a world where the only thing that matters to most is what's happening on TV, in movies, or through your phone. We want things, and we want them now. We don't want to wait for them, and so cable and Netflix are everywhere. They're even in our bedrooms. It seems like there's nothing else to do but watch the same shows over and over again, or add another show and wait while they're all worked into production. But let me tell you something. It's not working for you, and it's not working for your bank account either. You're spending too much time waiting for something to happen or watching the same thing over and over again when you can just ditch all of that right now. It's true, for a few bucks a month or less, you can get your favorite movies and TV shows online through services like Netflix, Hulu, Sling TV, and more. Even though you have to pay a small fee every month, you'll be saving money by cutting out cable costs. The truth is that you will not only save the subscription fee, you will also save the precious time where you can do effective things like reading a book, learning something new, or just spending quality time with the family. Number four, limit yourself to two new purchases per month. We've all heard the phrase saved by the bell, and we think it's great. But what about saved by the dollar? That's kind of boss too. And sure, we know you're probably not buying everything on your list in one fell swoop, but that doesn't mean you can't be strategic. A study has found that limiting yourself to only two new purchases per month is a saving habit that can help you save money. The study measured how much money people could save by following this rule and found out that making only two new purchases a month resulted in $1,000 in savings a year. This is because people are not just spending money on big items, but also small ones such as coffee. These small purchases can add up and lead to bigger problems like debt. A study by the University of Chicago Booth School of Business shows that people who regularly make purchases at retail stores tend to be more disorganized and less efficient with their time. However, when people limit their expenses to two new purchases per month, they become more organized and efficient with their time. The study found that limiting one's expenses to two new purchases per month has an effect on savings habits as well. People who purchase fewer items are more likely to save for retirement or for the future in general. Number three, compare prices online before buying anything. In recent years, online shopping has become increasingly popular. It is said that there are more than 200 million online shoppers in the world. This number keeps growing every day because of its convenience and efficiency, but it also has its cons. Compared with shopping at a brick and mortar store, shopping online can save you a lot of money. Firstly, more and more retailers provide discounts on their products when customers buy them online, which significantly lowers the cost of your purchase. Secondly, many websites allow customers to compare prices before purchasing certain products or service, which will help you find the best price possible. Doing research before buying anything can save you thousands of dollars over a lifetime. Therefore, establishing this saving habit will be beneficial for our wallets in the long run. Number two, shop secondhand. According to a survey by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average American household spent $1,800 on clothing and footwear in 2017. But that number is just an average. Some households might spend more, while others spend less. Regardless of what you spend on clothing, there's one way to make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck. Shopping secondhand. You'll save money on high-quality items. Also, if you're looking for designer clothes at discount prices, Secondhand stores are probably your best bet. For example, a pair of Nike running shoes that typically retail for more than $100 can be found for about half the price or sometimes even less at thrift stores. Environment-wise, shopping secondhand reduces your carbon footprint by preventing so much clothing from ending up in landfills. And when you buy stuff at Goodwill or Salvation Army, you're giving money directly to a charity that helps needy people in your community. 
Secondhand shopping is a win-win-win. If you enjoyed it so far, please like this video and leave a comment. What is your best way to save money? Number 1. Find products that do two jobs for the price of one. Finding products that do two or three jobs for the price of one is an excellent way to live below your means. For instance, when you find a moisturizer that also functions as sunscreen, you're killing two birds with one stone. Not only are you saving money, but you are also streamlining your routine and freeing up space in your medicine cabinet. Also, you can save half your hair care budget using a shampoo that doubles as a conditioner. By using products that do double duty, you can cut down on the number of steps in your morning routine. This will save you time and simplify your life. Your mornings will be streamlined and you'll feel great about it. No more fumbling through a cluttered medicine cabinet while half asleep, looking for that one product that's hiding in the back.